And so I asked the driver, I said, well, who do I call? And he says, well, you can talk to my boss. So I called the boss. And, well, I'm not allowed to give out the manager's name, but they're probably sitting out at the airport. So I called, um, I had to find a name, so I called the sheriff's office and I said, you know, can you help me find whoever this person is that I could get permission from? So I called him up and I said, I've got to have those ballots. I can get in my car and I can go pick them up, but I, evidently I need your permission. And he said, uh, wait a minute, where did you get my name? <laughs> I said, did the driver give you my name? And I said, no, he wouldn't give it to me. He says, well, no, I don't give this number out. And I said, well, I called the sheriff's office and they found you. So then he started listening and I said, I have to get my car right now and I have to go get these ballots. So he arranged for me to drive over to Pullman. The plane came in, I got the ballots, and when I got back to the office, there was like 30 ballots left. And uh, so that was a real nail biter. Just because everybody in the country was under the same stress. Everyone wanted their ballots and they wanted them overnight shipped. And so you can imagine our contractor, Election Systems and Software, they subcontract these out to other printers. Your, pro your ballots might one day come from Mississippi and another day come from Omaha. You just never knew. Um, we had another little scare. Uh, uh, the presidential election was fraught with near misses, but luckily I think everything came out smoothly. But the initial ballot order that I got in, we were running our test on it, and we found out that the channels in the sides weren't going through the tabulator correctly because the front channels and the back channels, because you have to turn your ballot over, you know, weren't matching. Mm -hmm. So oh, really? I thought, I wonder if this is just in the test or if it's prevalent throughout all of the ballots for Glatow County that I ordered. So I sent a deputy clerk down to the basement and she sat for hours and spot checked. And sure enough, we had channels off. Mm -hmm. And so that was a call to Omaha saying, I need a complete reorder. Mm -hmm. And we're just like two weeks out of, of having to start issue absentee ballots. And they said, we've got it, we'll reprint them and we'll send them. But what it taught me was that the reason we do testing is to find out if everything's going to work on election day. And it worked. That you want those safeguards in place that if there is a problem, because they, the ESNS had to fly a technician in to a neighboring county who didn't check that their channels were off. They didn't catch it in their testing. But luckily, we caught it here. Can you imagine election night and the ballots not going through the machine properly? <laughs> so what did you do with the bad ballots? I shredded every one of them. <laughs> and, and speaking of the ballots, there's a real high security around ballots. When we get our shipment in, we, they're all numbered. If you worked election, you can see at the bottom of the stub is a number, but once you pull that ballot off, it's no longer connected to that number. But we have to submit to the Secretary of State's office um, how many, where, what we're going to do with our ballots when they arrive, that they're going to be locked up in a fireproof environment, and then as we send them out to the polls, we have to document which ballots they got on the stub. And then we check when we get the ballots back that that amount matches how many they turned in unvoted. There are those safeguards in place. We have to submit to the Secretary of State how we're going to do that. It's, it's called our security plan. It has to be approved by the Secretary of State. And um, the other safeguard we have um, is on the registration side. Because you think you just fill out that flimsy little card and turn it into us? Well, we actually validate every single name. We match it up with a social security number or a driver's license number. And if it doesn't match, like we had young Democrats and young Republicans and League of Women voters, everybody was going out trying to register as many people as possible. And that was great and we appreciated it. But when those came back to us, we had to validate them. And if we could, and the Secretary of State's office, their they have a hardwired system into us that doesn't allow any other input. There's no internet on it. It's just a straight line system. And um, their validation went down. 
<laughs> it was a couple of weeks before election, and all these registrations were rolling in, and we couldn't validate them. So we were having to enter them in the computer, but put them in a file that says these aren't validated, so we need to address that as soon as their system. It took them a week because driver's license, which is part of the validation process, had decided to change some software <laughs> right before election. <laughs> and so we couldn't get into their system to validate our driver's license numbers. It was a nightmare. I mean, I give so much credit to my staff um, for the work that they did in catching these things ahead of time so we were able to have a smooth election and getting all of these uh, registrations validated and entered properly. Louise? Yeah, and following up on that beautifully, how many of those registrations that came in from the from Young Dams, Young Republicans, wherever they came in, were fraudulent? A lot of them were. And so what we have to do in that case is contact that person. We can't get them on the phone because they didn't write a phone number down. We mail them something. That's so time consuming. Yeah. That's why we were doing voter registration training by Victoria downstairs. <laughs> I don't know how many people she trained on how to register voters and how important it was that they do it right because it really causes a problem in our office. This person thinks they're registered. They're going to go to the polls and they're not going to be able to vote unless they re-register um, because we couldn't validate their card. Now how many of them were fraudulent or screw-ups? Oh, so you're refer referring to people maybe who voted twice? Mm -hmm. I don't know. We had one case of that in Lytton County. I know you've read about the one in Asotan County that they actually prosecuted. And, and Patty Weeks, I think, had a couple. I don't know the details on hers. We had one person who came in early on and voted absentee because if you remember, um, you could start voting absentee way before election. Well, then she came in again two days before the election and voted again. And we we're just swamped with people voting, right? But bless her heart, Melody every day would take those, you know, whoever voted yesterday, the very next day she was entering in the poll book, these people voted. Because when we send the list out to the polls, we have to have written in there who voted absentee so they can't show up at the polls and vote again. And she got to this lady's and she'd already voted. So we called the sheriff's office, a deputy had to make a report and go out. And she was just dingy. <laughs> it, was, it was obvious that she had, did not have malice intent. And I, I could have prosecuted, but I, I just felt like she was a little, but that was a little loopy. Was she both that the was same me. both times? I don't know. She <laughs> said, <laughs> in the officer's report, she says, well, I just voted for the local candidates on the first when I went the other day, I voted for the president, and that's all I voted for. And so, <laughs> so she was just confused, and uh, that's that's the only case she had. that was the only case I had. But, you know, you hear a lot about fraudulent elections and that sort of thing. No. And I just can't imagine how someone could change an election uh, fraudulently in Lake Tuck County. The state of Idaho is very careful about the ballots, and... Um, I'm really comfortable with it. I'm glad we have those safeguards in place that we're able to catch these things before they become a problem. So um, did you count one of the ballots of the dingy lady? I did. Which one? I counted the first one. Okay. And we voided the second. Because yeah, because you don't know something how to go that first one. It's gone. Right. Did the numbers are entered? That's it. Well, is, what is there a date? Was there date on it? On that or something? Oh yeah. Or, Everybody okay. that votes absentee, we know what date they voted and. You remember if you vote, how many voted absentee? <laughs> so so you, you voted your ballot, you put it in a secrecy sleeve, and then you put it in a big one, and then you sealed it, and then you signed it. Well, er, we have to divide those into precincts. We have to keep track of that. 5,200 ballots. Do you know even storage? We were running out of places to put them. And by law, we can't even start opening them until election day. And I had about four people ready to, you know, start opening ballots at noon. And I thought, they're going to be here all day. We'll never get these counted. So I called a couple of social service 
deputies that I have that work down there and a couple from district court and I said all hands on deck we've got <laughs> envelope rippers in our hand and we're trying to just the time it took to open that many ballots and get that many ballots run through our tabulator was um, I, unanticipated on my part I had no, no idea it would take that long to open that many ballots I got to help with that fun task too. That's uh, right. I got called I up. Called I was like, what are you doing at the museum? Do you want to help? Um, and I just want to say how much care was taken with each and every one of those. I mean, I was really impressed. I walked in and it was a very smooth system and it was uh, a lot of care was taken to make sure that every vote was not mixed up, right. that it was in the right precinct. But, right. Um, so it was not just uh, free for all of yeah. tear everything open and get and, going. And that's a good point. I don't want just anybody down in the ballot room. You can't just no. go <laughs> grab somebody <laughs> and, and say, come on and work at the examination table. You want people that you can trust, that you know are is a, it's an, as important to them as it is to you, that everybody who voted has their vote counted. And that is the, you know, that's our mission statement in a nutshell when it comes to elections. And, um, but now you know how long it takes. So now, now I know. Yeah, we call him the lead. <laughs> <laughs> eight, 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 eight.